will be starting in just a couple of minutes. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us a little bit early here. Good morning, we'll be starting momentarily. Well, good morning and I'd like to welcome everybody to the IBM Systems Ease and Mentis webinar. Um, my name is Mark Rabkin. I'm the Director of Business Development with Zementis. And today's webinar is entitled IBM Z Systems and Zementis on the Business Advantage through Inline Predictive Analytics. We are honored to have so many participants from leading companies as well as consulting organizations. Um, you'll hear a bit more about Zementis during the webinar from one of our founders and CEO, Michael Zeller. Before we get started, I would like to mention a few housekeeping items shown on the slide in front of you. Uh, due to the number of attendees, all attendees will be muted during the call. However, there will be time for questions and answers at the end of the call, and, and we do hope that you will ask questions. Uh, the way that you'll be submitting questions will be by clicking on the questions panel that you should see and typing them in. You can do this during the presentation as well as during the Q&A period. And as moderator, I'll ask our presenters to answer those questions. To control volume, please adjust the master volume on your computer, whether you want it louder or softer. Um, all attendees will receive an email from us via GoToMeeting a couple hours after the end of this webinar. This will contain a link to enable you to download a joint IBM Zementis solution brief on Zementis for Z Systems. Please keep an eye out for it. This session is being recorded and it will be archived. You will receive an automatic email notification when it is available, or you can check Zementus.com in a few days. Um, so we're very lucky to have two experts with us today, the first being Paul DiMarzio, who is the Worldwide Portfolio Marketing Manager for, for IBM Z Systems uh, in the area of big data and analytics. Uh, I've worked with Paul closely uh, over the last number of months, and he has a great amount of experience in this area on bringing new and emerging technologies to the mainframe. He is currently responsible for developing and executing IBM's worldwide B systems, big data and analytics portfolio marketing strategy. Michael Zeller, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the founders and CEO of Zementis. He also serves on the board of directors of the Software San Diego and as Treasury Secretary and Treasurer on the Executive Committee of ACM SIG KDD, which is the premier international organization for data mining researchers and practitioners from academia, industry, and government. Um, so in the next hour, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about Zementis for IBM Z systems, run through a brief technical demo to give you an idea of how the solution looks and operates, and field your questions. And the key questions that we're going to address are, what are the advantages of integrating predictive analytics directly with the business processes that they support? 
How does this inline predictive analytics on a mainframe computing system enable sharply reduce time to insight for critical business decisions as a scalable operational capability? And how can Cementus for IBM Z systems help organizations drive faster, more accurate predictive insights within the context of customer analytics and risk management? And which industry use cases for this capability are particularly relevant? So with that, I'm really looking forward to the presentation about this opportunity uh, from Paul and Mike. And with that, we'll turn it over to Paul DiMarzio. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. So um, everybody should be seeing slide, slide, slide seven now as we start to talk through the opportunity here. Um, you know, I, I don't really want to belabor the point, but if you are interested in analytics, I'm sure that every day you're receiving some kind of a communication with some great numbers about how analytics can transform your business, right? Um, but there's also a, a bit of a downside or a dark side to that as well. So just to give you a couple of examples, you know, we see data that shows us that if you use customer uh, engagement analytics um, with your clients, you can get a 7.6% 7 .7 boost in the, the key metric of customer lifetime value. But the flip side there is if you use engagement analytics improperly, you're actually going to lose 4.3% of that value. Um, we see data that shows us the, the ROI of analytics projects, and this is very true. But again, if you don't do it correctly, you, you have the chance of, of losing some money there as well. And with all the effort that's been going into fraud, um, a lot of it very successfully, you know, we're still seeing fraud that, uh, extant that's measured in the billions of dollars. So, you know, why does this happen? Uh, I think it really comes down to two things, and, and we've kind of, you know, fleshed this out as we've worked with our clients on, the, on this question. It's not just a matter of choosing to do analytics. You have to also choose the right analytic for the right use case, and you have to place it properly within the IT infrastructure. And where projects succeed, they're choosing the right analytic and placing it properly, and where they fail, they're not. So in the course of this presentation, we're going to kind of talk through this, and we're going to focus very much on, on what we'll call inline or embedded analytics, because we're starting to see now a lot more people talk about the need to go from backward, you know, passive looking, you know, backward looking analytics to forward looking predictive analytics and to embed those analytics into day to day operations as opposed to doing it after the fact. So that's about where we are, you know, in this space right now. So if we move on to the next slide, I'll just explain why we're so focused on, on predictive. Um, I love predictive because it really gives you a, a rich ability to really understand your customers as if they were the only customer engaging with you as a business. So if you're worried about you know, customer retention or if you want to make the next best offer to the customer, if you really want to make them happy, and at the same time understand whether or not others are coming in and trying to defraud you, you know, while you're trying to make people happy, you really have to engage with predictive analytics. And, and the reason for that is Predictive analytics uh, is, is a way of doing analytics that actually looks at all your data and, and teases out the patterns. So, so we find out you know, what are common types of behaviors amongst different people for different occasions, and then we can use that information to pre predict future behavior. And in fact, if you're looking at you know, in-line or in-transaction analytic, we can use that information to predict the behavior of each and every interaction, every transaction, even if you're executing you know, a couple hundred thousand or a million of these a day. But just to give you a really quick example, you know, let's say that I'm really focused on, you know, these, these use cases, but I use a rules-based system. Um, you know, rules are, are very binary. They're yes or no. They're very good. Um, and if you craft your rules well, you'll have a very good uh, means of looking at the data that's happening, but it can't give you you know, that gray area or probability. So it may be the case that, that you may have a business rule in place that says, you know, for every, tra every card transaction that's over $1,000 with a card not present environment, we have, to, we have to turn that over to an underwriter. They have to look at it before we actually let that transaction go. Um, so I might be somebody who, you know, makes a lot of transactions at, um, I, I don't know, sporting goods stores, say, for example. Um, I do that all the time. I usually go in and, and have my card there. Um, but I'm planning a new trip. I'm going to go hiking in the Grand Canyon, and uh, I saw something online that, that was really good for me, and um, I, I want to buy it. So I, I purchased that card not present over $1,000. If the, if, if the manufacturer, I'm sorry, if the vendor was using um, just rules, that transaction probably would have gotten flagged and, and possibly discarded. 
But if you're looking at the information about me and you know my behavior, my purchase history, you know, you know that I like to go hiking, you know that I like to buy this stuff, um, you can maybe you can even see that I've already planned a trip to the Grand Canyon because you have that information. Um, then you come back with a probability. It says, you know, it's probably, you know, 80% likely that this is a valid transaction. And then you can engage your business rules to make a decision as to what you want to do. Do you want to pass it or not? So it's this ability to do predictive analytics that gives you that rich uh, set of, of information to really um, treat your customers as if they were what we, we tend to call a demographic of one. So next slide, please. So, so placement here is critically important. If you think about any of these types of use cases that involve customer interaction, um, it's usually a very fast transactional oriented engagement. You know, somebody is swiping a card, somebody's put something into a, into a web basket, somebody's on the phone with you. Um, it, it's an immediate interaction that has to be resolved right then and there. Um, a lot of clients are afraid to do something, you know, as, as rich as predictive analytics in, in line of these transactions because they're, they're very, very fast. You know, we look at a lot of our customers and, you know, they're running transactions at the rate of, say, uh, 350 to 450 milliseconds execution time for a transaction. And that's a tight service level agreement that they have to keep. Um, so they shy away from predictive analytics. It sounds like it should take a long time. Um, but what we're going to see here today from, from our partners, Amentis, is that you can build these types of very smart, very advanced analytics into transactions for an extremely low cost. You know, we're talking about one, two millisecond type environment here. So if you're, if you're working with a transaction space that's about a half a second and you're adding a millisecond or two to that to get this rich environment, this rich data, don't, don't you think it's worth it? Um, we certainly do here at IBM and that's why we've engaged and partnered with Cementus because Cementus is a leader in this space. Um, they're one of the best at executing predictive models fast and they have some really cool technology that allows us to inject that scoring engine directly in line with the transactions that are running on the mainframe. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Zeller, who's going to take you through the solution, and I'll be back later on to go through some use cases. Okay, Michael? Yes, so thank you, Paul. Uh, this was, I think, a very concise, very great um, um, description of the opportunity itself. So um, I'm now jumping into the actual solution overview, and yeah, most of you already know these systems. You know what an enterprise-grade mainframe can do for you. Um, it's not just the hardware, but uh, really the powerful stack that you have from you know, servers to storage to software that sits on top of it. And it's something that that addresses really the new app economy um, you know, with all the mobile transactions that we're facing today, with all the analytics that we want to run on every uh, single transaction. And really, that's where, where mainframes shine. Um, and especially something that uh, you know, has got, gotten a lot of press coverage is security and trust, basically, of those transactions. So great system. Now, the question is, how do we make it better? Um, and the partnership between IBM and Dementis um, really uh, is on this inline transaction processing that Paul just mentioned. Uh, Cementus really is a, a software company focused on the operational deployment of predictive analytics, really bringing those um, models to fast and big data. Uh, we were named a, a Gartner Cool vendor uh, in data science in 2014, and the key vision behind our product um, is, is pretty simple. It really revolves around teams, models, and then business value. So teams, data science teams, and IT departments uh, should be able to really collaborate to work together seamlessly and efficiently um, on those complex models. Predictive models then should be able to move rapidly from development, I mean, from the data science team to the IT department for deployment. And in essence, what that drives is really that business, uh, the business side can incorporate predictive analytics much easier and much faster in everyday operations. And that's really where we want those models to be. That's where the models drive critical business value. So really the focus for us is agile deployment and operational execution of predictive models. In short, um, we call this Z for Z. So the Mentis for Z systems. And uh, it is really an integrated predictive analytics deployment and scoring capability that embeds 
our scoring engine directly in the C system um, operation. Mike, your slide didn't advance. I'm in advance. Is this the right slide? Um, I did you go to did you go past the company slide? I am in uh, number thirteen, so slide number thirteen right now. I'm only seeing twelve. Okay. That means I have lost my network connection. Um, um, and do you want me oh. to pull up the presentation and run the slides? Yes, please. Okay, give me a minute to do that. Okay, I think we're there. Just give me a moment. Um, can you see my screen and slide 13? Yes, we're back. Perfect. Um, all right. So why is uh, slide 13? So why is this so important for us? Because it uh, Z for Z, so the the integration of predictive models and the fund uh, really creates one common platform strategy that allows you to deploy and execute your predictive models at the point of greatest interest, right inside of the transaction. And that's really where efficiency and transaction performance become so so critical and so important. So, at the, in, in, in other words, we're actually bringing the prediction models to the data, to the transactions, and that's why we're able to execute inline and, and very, very efficient. And what it does, it closes the distance that you typically see between data and compute, computation. Okay, next slide, please. So we've seen what it is. Uh, C4C is basically a fully integrated analytic deployment and scoring engine. And uh, if you move one on, what does it do for us really is it executes predictive models uh, that are developed in different data mining uh, solutions, uh, IBM data mining platforms, as well as third-party statistical solutions, like OpenSR, for example, which is very um, popular for SAS. Um, it delivers a set of certified execution engines which are uh, directly embedded within the Java environment on ZOS. So directly able to leverage um, out of kick, out of IMS and WebSphere. And it fuses basically the decisions and the transactions, uh, the predictive decisions and the transactions into one component. And what that means at the end of the day, it is very fast, very scalable, and it can handle extremely high data volume. So now, how does that help? It not only dramatically reduces your time to insight, but it also really maximizes the value of the existing infrastructure. So you're able to leverage the investment that's in these systems and on-ramp basically predictive models from other systems very effectively directly into the, into the transaction processing um, mainframe. All right, next slide, please. So let's take a deeper look into C systems and uh, its vision. Um, and if you hit the button for me once, uh, our session focus today is really illustrating the top aspects here in in, uh, in, the, in this cycle, meaning analyzing that uh, data modeling, uh, data mining, transacting, executing those models, so storing. And then really what, what, what it derives out of that is the decisioning process, you know, really the actions that you drive from those principles models. Next slide, please. So it is a solution for business leaders and technology professionals alike. On one end, we see C-level executives really asking for more and more predictive analytics for smarter decisions. And that's at the end of the day what you want to run your business more effectively, more efficiently and to drive decisions directly into the business process. But your technology prof professionals, that is IT and data science, really need to deliver those models more effectively. So 
for them, this is the ideal solution as well. Next slide, please. So inline predictive analytics, remember that's really the key value proposition for us, uh, for business and technology uh, alike. When you embed predictive models inside of your flow, inside of your business process, that, that's really where they create the greatest value for you. So the overall value on the business side is, is simply um, in time to insight, shorter time to insight, higher accuracy for the business decisions on that insight, uh, more increased business agility. That means you'll be able to deploy faster models, uh, more effective models uh, when you need them and at the right time and the right business point of impact. It allows you also to give tighter governance and security, um, very, very critical in, in today's infrastructure. And of course, uh, overall, you lower risk. You lower your risk for business as well as technology. Next slide, please. On the IT side, we have the data scientists and uh, the information technology executives, I would say. Um, they share the value of the solution just as much as the business because it allows them to deliver predictive models faster, so more models. Uh, it allows them to deliver better models, so more pre precise models because you are able to leverage different modeling techniques. You can deliver more complex models just as easy as simple models into production. And those models then run faster, so it, it's a higher scalability Higher scalability, I guess I would say in two dimensions, to deliver models faster as well as you know, run them faster if you have pure processing power. Um, on the IT side, um, you have a lower move, uh, data movement, so you minimize moving data in and out of systems because you're bringing models and predictive decisions directly to the data inside of your transaction system. And overall, really what you lower is cost and complexity of your IT organization. You have one common process, one common standard to manage uh, predictive models inside of your existing transaction systems. And of course, that gives you a higher efficiency of your existing IT infrastructure that you've already built to you know, run 24-7, meet your SLAs, and really deliver the scalability that you need for your business. So how does this work? For the Mentis, at the core really is the predictive model markup language industry standard. Um, that is a uh, well-known industry standard. It's an XML-based language that allows you to define predictive models in XML and to exchange them between different applications. Now, think of it as the PDF format for predictive models. You know, simply save as PDF. Uh, save as PMML, and then you can take this model virtually anywhere. Uh, it's a standard that's been supported by most of the leading data mining tools, and that allows you to deploy it across many different platforms. And it delivers compatibility with IBM Z systems, so we're uh, leveraging the enterprise-grade performance and scalability of the underlying uh, mainframe, and run those models directly in line and in the processing system that's already established. But it also allows us to um, leverage different other IBM architectures. And that's really the great opportunity where you have a common process and a common standard to deploy models. So it's not just a one size fits all, but it really allows you to move, to make those models portable, those models portable across multiple systems. Next slide, please. The integration, again, is one common API, one common process for deployment across the ecosystem. So here you have a your standardized Java API or Web App Services API that allows you to integrate the same models uh, in COBOL, in Kix, in Java, in a WebSphere application, in IMS. Again, the, the details of that particular integration will really depend on your, on your application's needs but it allows you to have one simple and clear requirements definition on how you invoke models, how you deploy models. And as I mentioned before, what's key for that is it lowers cost and complexity of those projects and allows you to quickly deploy models into an existing environment. Next slide, please. 
So in the bigger life cycle ecosystem um, for, for the Z system ecosystem, we sit um, at two key nodes. One is analyze and one is transact. So let's uh, take a look at the analyze uh, node here. And analyzing means simply building models. So how do we are more efficient and more uh, precise in modeling? It allows us not only to use uh, SPSS, various different tools there um, in the IBM uh, portfolio, so IBM SPSS modeler and uh, 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 statistics, but also our Python and SAS. So really, in a large organization, we see a heterogeneous environment, and this allows the data scientists to be most efficient um, and fast in their deployment because it eliminates any kind of manual process. And how do we do that? Really, it is through the predictive model markup language, the PNML industry standard that really streamlines and accelerates predictive model deployment. That's the core message here. Uh, compatible with your existing SPSS tools and many other technologies as we'll see in a few slides. Now, on the next node, that's the transaction part. You know, once you have your models, how do you how do you actually use them? And that means one model, or many models, hundreds of models. Um, here, these systems allows us to generate very quickly insights because we are quickly able to deploy and integrate those models into into the uh, the existing processes. And, and remember, this is where the models really start generating their value. Um, the greatest model doesn't help you anything if you can't bring it to the transactions that are actually you know, um, at the core processing of your of your organization. That's where you want them to live. That's where they should you know try to look at every single transaction, detect fraud, uh, upsell and cross sell opportunities. I mean, that's really the core message behind the inline uh, analytic processing. Now, if we move to the next slide. Um, I just wanted to highlight that uh, we also have the capabilities, of course, to, to consume and to work hand-in-hand -hand with SPSS modeler and statistics. There are functional extensions that we've published uh, with SPSS. And uh, what it brings to the table here is that we have more options for data scientists, really, to develop models, to deploy models, uh, different types of models, simple models, super complex models. Again, you, you're kind of you know, freeing the data scientists from very specific choices or very specific um, constraints of modeling. Um, and without moving code around really a representation um, of, of the model through PML as the industry standard, not custom code, really the, the integration of those models becomes much, much faster and much easier. So to summarize, if we look at the broader ecosystem on the next slide, we've been focusing today on kind of the center aspect here, ZLAT and uh, mainframe. Um, but Zementus actually extends uh, broader across the IBM analytics ecosystem. Um, as I mentioned, there are extensions for modeler statistics, there are functional extensions for SPSS predictive customer intelligence. Uh, you can run this uh, in, in the cloud, but you can also dive deeper into the big data topic and run on IBM Big Insight, or, and that includes Hive, Storm, or Spark. You can directly embed it into a streaming application like Infosys Streams, or you can run it inside of a database, uh, pure data for analytics. Um, so again, the, the commonality and, and the platform approach here is what is so powerful. So you, you can deploy those models directly inside of your mainframe, inside of the transaction-based processing, but maybe one uh, some of those transactions are not that time critical, and so you have a, a secondary processing that happens in batch mode, say in a Hadoop system. Um, and you can leverage really the strong aspects of either application infrastructure uh, for scoring and for executing those predictive models. Okay, next slide, please. Well, with that, actually, um, I'm going to hand it over back to Paul and uh, let him talk a little bit more specifically about use cases. Paul, all yours. Yep, thanks, Michael. Appreciate that really great overview of, of your solution and how it fits within the uh, the mainframe environment. So let's um, let's look about how you might want to go about using this and, and where it's resonating with clients, because we have been talking to a lot of our clients about this solution 
And we find that um, financial services, healthcare, and retail are three of the industries where we're really getting a lot of attention. Um, and I think that's that's for, for three reasons, right? One is that these are industries that typically have extremely high uh, transaction rates, which means they tend to have the, the tightest service level agreements, and so therefore a solution that they can inject into their transactional environment that's very, very fast um, is certainly appealing. Um, second, they, they tend to have very large client-facing components, right? So in all three of these industries, you're dealing with people, dealing with a lot of people. Um, loyalty is, is very key here, so you need to be able to keep those people happy. Um, and then the third is that in, in each of these industries, you know, money is exchanged, payments are made, um, and you also have to be wary about, uh, about the risk that's associated with that. Um, it's not to say that this is not uh, applicable to other solutions um, like manufacturing or, or airlines or telco. It certainly is. Um, but in terms of the clients we've been talking to, it's, it's truly resonating uh, in these three industries. And if you look down the vertical of this slide, in terms of specific use cases, we, we find that they tend to batch up into two particular groups. You know, one we'll call customer analytics. Um, you may think about terms like next best action or, or predictive customer insight. You know, any case where you're really trying to give your customer that best experience so that you outshine your competitor in terms of the services that you're able to offer to, to predictively understand, you know, if this client is at risk of leaving you and what can you give them to, to make them stay before they may even know that, that, that they want to go. Um, and then the other side, as I said, is, is risk management. So, you know, really being uh, cautious of fraud, being able to detect fraud before you actually make a payment. You know, so many of our clients that are, are at risk for fraud, what they'll do is they'll actually pay out claims or pay out uh, payments um, and then retroactively do a predictive analysis to try to figure out what did they pay that should be uh, brought back. You never get that money back, right? So you want to be able to find out if a particular transaction is, is bad or not before it's actually it's handled. And you know this category also includes use cases like you know money laundering, financial crimes, things of that nature. Any sort of risk is good here. So let me take you through one example of each of these real quick. Next slide, please. So um, both of these examples are actually taken from discussions with, with actual clients, uh, and, and these are things that they want to achieve, and you know, Zementus is really well positioned to, to satisfy these types of use cases. So this one here, we're looking at uh, a next best offer type use case, that, that customer analytics. Talking about a bank um, that makes car loans, right? Um, and if you were to just, you know, if somebody came in and asked for the, the rates on a car loan, and all you did was satisfy that request, you know, maybe the client would say, okay, thank you very much, and, you know, make three or four or five other calls or inquiries, and then just pick the lowest cost provider. But what if that client actually already has a business relationship with you, um, and it turns out that they have a small business line of credit, and your banking rules say that, you know, LOC clients uh, get better rates, they get a better deal on any sort of loan. So rather than simply answering the question, what you want to do is you want to be able to say, hey, I, I heard what you asked for, but you know what? I can do better for you because you're a client of mine um, and we've got this program for you. That's treating your customer uh, as if they're a demographic of one and truly delighting them. So how would you go about doing a thing like this? Next slide. Thank you. So the solution, of course, is, you know, well, we're talking about Zementus, so you would put Zementus into the transaction. You would put um, the Zementus product, the ability to do a predictive score directly within the context of the transaction. So, so you know, when this inquiry comes in, um, instead of just processing the specific inquiry, you do a next best action scenario. It could be a set of models that look at the relationship this client has with the bank. It pulls in data from various sources. It sees that this client um, is already a client and they have a better opportunity. You package that together and you give it to them all within the scope of the transaction. Next slide, please. So, you know, obviously I think, well, I hope it's obvious that you want to do this in real time because, you know, if, if you have somebody making this inquiry, you have to give them the results back at the speed they request. You know, they want something back immediately. If you take too long, they may hang up, or if they're inquiring through the web, they may just close down the browser. So real time is key because you have to satisfy this request while you have the client engaged. Uh, it's also important, though, to have access to all the data needed to provide a good decision. You, know, you don't just want to provide a quick decision here. You want to make sure you truly understand the risk involved. You know, perhaps you, you offer this guy 
um, a loan that is actually turns out to be a fairly risky loan for the bank because you didn't take all of the relevant and current data into account. Well, Zementis allows you to do this. It has the ability to tap into all of the real-time information that's on the mainframe system. It can make this decision in milliseconds. It can provide the kind of answer that's required to, to give this, this sort of customer service. Next slide, please. So let me take you through a, a fraud example real quick. So here we have an example of a client. It's a, again, it's a banking example. Um, and you know every bank that runs card transactions has an anti-fraud system in place. If they didn't, uh, they would be out of business uh, very, very quickly. Um, but what we find is typically these are, are based on rules engines. And you know some banks are very, very sophisticated in their ability to, to generate these rules. And what they'll do is they'll take their data, they'll, they'll run some very extensive uh, SQL uh, queries against it, and um, then they'll tune their rules based on what they see. So in this particular case, you know, this was a bank that felt that they could do better with their fraud engine if they were to aggregate data across geographies, uh, merchants, issuers, card history, you know, pinpoint, you know, do we find that a lot of fraud comes from this particular store in this particular geography? So maybe it's not necessarily on a, on a cardholder basis, but maybe there are other factors that, that pertain to fraud. So they wanted to be able to provide that much more refined view of what was happening than just the user level view that they, that they had with their existing rule set. So next slide, please. So again, you know, if you're going to go through the process of you know, coming up with these, these sort of queries and, and coming up with this understanding, why not write a predictive model against that? Um, predictive modeling is so much more refined, as, as we talked about earlier. It gives you so much more precision in your ability to understand if a particular transaction will be fraudulent or not. And, and really, when you look at a solution like Zementis that, that, incorp that um, pulls in PMML, you can use any tool you want to build that model. What are you comfortable with? What's your favorite tool? You know, lots of, uh, of mainframe clients have SaaS models. You know, we've got SPSS within, within the mainframe. Some people like to write them directly in a language like R. Um, Zementis can support all of that. Um, and it's laser quick. It's, it's faster than a rules engine, I would say. Um, it's, uh, it, it can provide those insights and that sort of, um, uh, th that sort of uh, answer within the scope of a business banking transaction, which is very, 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 very fast. And so you can get that sort of aggregated view of what's going on um, doing, rule, uh, doing a predictive modeling using Zementis. So next slide, please. So again, you know, the, the goal here for the bank, uh, obviously, is to, is to reduce the amount of fraud uh, that is paid out. So they want to detect this fraud prepayment as opposed to postpayment. And the more precision they can have in terms of their ability to do that detection, the better off they're going to be. Um, and, and really, predictive analytics is the way to go. You know, a lot, as I showed you on my first slide of this section, you know, financials are very, very interested in this solution because they do have very tight SLAs and they're very concerned about fraud. Um, and financial crimes, and we're showing these uh, institutions that they have now with the Zementis solution the ability to get that type of predictive modeling and scoring directly within the transaction without blowing up their SLA. So, um, you know, very quick run through through two use cases. I'm sure one or the other probably resonates with you, whatever industry you're in. Um, you know, just apply this to what it is you're doing, and I think you'll find that if you have a high transaction environment where the, where the data is on the mainframe. You know, you're going to get great benefit out of this solution. So, um, Michael, I think it's back to you for a demo. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jackie, can you hand over the controls to me? I hope you can see my browser screen now. Let's see it up our login. So what I'm going to show you here is uh, the Adapa scoring engine, uh, one of the solutions that's part of the Z for Z, the uh, Zementis for Z systems portfolio. Um, um, this one, Mike, I cannot see your screen. Um, can any of the other panelists see his screen? I don't know if this is unique to me. Yes, I can see it. Okay. Okay, excellent. The 
a system here running on a Web2 application server in this case, uh, but likewise the same model can of course go into a, a direct Java API and a PIX environment or a J Java for ZOS environment. So you already see on my score on my, my screen here the uploaded models. I have two, four, six, seven models that are already deployed in the systems, and as soon as they deploy, they're available for scoring, for inline scoring. And the deployment of uh, models is simple, as simple as uploading a PMML file. So like now we I cannot see it anymore. Okay. Can you see my screen again? No. Anyone? <laughs> Nobody? Right. Unfortunately not. Um, maybe uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll go over to Q&A. Oh, it's, back. it's, oh, it's back. back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so I apologize for that. Uh, we seem to have slightly uh, slight technical problems today. So. Um, uploading or deployment of a file today um, is, is as simple as uploading a PMML file. So PMML is the greatest model markup language industry standard, and I'm simply selecting one particular file, one particular model here. Um, you see the XML structure a little bit, uploading that. The model is validated. It's basically deployed in memory in the system. And you see here I've added the model number eight in my list. And basically, it allows you to now utilize that model immediately for scoring. And then keep in mind, those models can come from different tools. It can be SPSS Modeler, SPSS Statistics, SAS Enterprise Miner, it can be from R. Here, for example, we have a very large R random forest tree model. So this is a very large um, uh, scale model, very uh, popular in these days, but also very heavy, heavy weight because it's a very large uh, definition of the model itself. But nevertheless, you can use those in real time in very tight SLAs to execute predictive analytics on the fly inside of your transaction systems. So using such a model is um, very, very simple. So just to demonstrate this here interactively, um, I'm just going to upload a CSV file with uh, 2,000 transactions. And uh, this file actually is going to include the um, uh, expected results. So what I'm performing is a model scoring, uh, score matching test that will allow you to to validate that this model actually uh, works directly and uh, produces exactly those results that, that the data scientist um, told you it would produce. And you see um, processing was extremely fast here, 0 0.3 seconds, and this is just a little test machine uh, for 2,000 transactions. And uh, yeah, as I changed a few of the records to showcase that score matching is something very important, uh, you see that 10 of the records did not match and I could actually uh, drill down to the exact records and figure out why they wouldn't match um, and look at the execution trace of that particular model. So very fine-grained audit uh, and traceability options that allow you to extremely fast, uh, um, not just extremely fast execution, but also validation of models as you deploy them in, into production. Uh, keep in mind that, you know, there's, there's, a, there's now different teams involved. You know, one team, the data scientist produces the model, IT deploys the model, business uses the model, and you have to ensure consistency around that process to make sure that one of the many models that you deploy is the right model. Um, so governance is, is, is one of the key elements here. And you see, um, I can actually um, look at additional uh, um, variables that this particular model uh, uses as input. I can go in and enable certain filters. So I could look at um, every, uh, let me see, let's see if I can do every bachelor degree here. Um, again, for risk modeling or fraud detection, this is perfect. Um, I can uh, validate that my model produces exactly those results. But the idea really is not to interactively use the system, of course, but to embed those transactions, all of those models, um, directly within your um, transaction processing. So not interactively anyone using the model here, clicking on or uploading transactions, but your system 
tightly embeds those models, calls them every single for every single transaction and returns the results, and then those results flow downstream into a decision. Um, and PMML cannot uh, can can also reduce um, report back a decision, a business decision. It doesn't have to be, for example, just a statistical score. You can map that score into a you know, decision for approved, decline, you know, upsell, product code, marketing campaign. So there are very many opportunities to optimize the flow downstream so that the business um, systems that expect certain results function as they do today. So this is not a rip in a place, but really a turbocharging of existing systems with more um, uh, advanced decisions based on predictive analytics. And so here we see a set of PML models. I just wanted to quickly mention that uh, there's few, uh, a few other tricks uh, in, in, in the engine. So you can upload certain in-memory tables that you uh, can look up on the fly if models need secondary data. You can have custom functions. That, for example, here I have a custom function library for fraud detection that extend um, the standard with certain features that may be secret to your own organization, may not be represented in, a, in an open standard. But the standard itself already covers really you know, all of the mainstream algorithms from simple regression models to very complex uh, random forests to machine learning models like neural networks or support vector machines. So you have a vast um, library, so to speak, at your, at your disposal where your data scientist can inject the best model um, into your transaction system without having to, you know, uh, wait six months. So if you if you if they develop a model that performs 10% better on all your recommendations, you, know, you want that model in production yesterday. And this is what um, the integration with these systems really allows us to do. And with that, I think we're we're nearing kind of the uh, end of our session today. So allow me to switch back to our Q&A. I think that's what probably is next. And I know we had a fairly large audience. So Mark, I'll hand it over to you for moderating some of the questions that we may have gotten. Sure. Uh, thank you. So um, one of the questions that came through was for you, Mike. And the question was, you know, whatever data mining or predictive model building tool I've used, how do I know that if I'm executing this model th through Zementis, that that model is going to uh, deliver the same results? How do you ensure the model integrity? <laughs> yeah, I think the the um, the, the quick demo I just provided um, uh, really kind of highlights that particular feature actually. Um, so you, you have models that flow across different organizations in your, in, your, in your company and by deploying the model as I just showed and then running a score matching task you, you really ensure that there's you know, exactly the same result as you expect them to be. Um, and then in, in, in addition to that, the XML structure of the model protects you uh, in, in a certain sense from malicious code. So you, you don't have to look at you know, large uh, libraries of scripting code that can do virtually anything in your system, but you have a representation of the scoring algorithm that can only score new data and shouldn't be able to do anything malicious. So in that sense, uh, it's an additional uh, security factor and so audit uh, capabilities, traceability, um, on top of just the pure performance of faster deployment. Great. Thank you for that. Um, and this one's uh, for you, Paul. Uh, there's a certain amount of analytics that already happens on the mainframe today. Um, how do you see Zementis broadening um, the opportunities for analytics on the mainframe today? What's, what's different? It's not, again, it's not that analytics haven't been done in, in the past on mainframe data. So what's different about Zementis? 
Um, well, what we, what we usually find is that um, analytics being performed on mainframe data is actually being performed off-platform, right? A lot of our clients take the data off the mainframe, they ETL it to other systems and do the analysis there. Um, for those who actually do do uh, the analysis on platform, um, it's usually post-process, right? So it's, um, we're looking at data that's been collected uh, and then we analyze it. We see what happened. So we're taking a backward look at the data that we've collected and, and we see, you know, what was going on, what could we do better. What Zementis is doing is it's providing the ability to inject that analytic insight directly into the transaction. So it's more, it's forward looking, if you will. So as a transaction's occurring, you have the ability to alter the, um, the outcome of that transaction while it's still in flight. Um, so rather than looking back and then deciding what you're going to do for everybody in the future, you're actually on a case-by-case -case basis, transaction-by-trans transaction basis, if you will, making dis making smart decisions about how you want to handle that transaction. So, you know, we're now talking about you know the the, the uh, definition of real time when when milliseconds matter, as opposed to when you know I want to have a report you know tonight or or tomorrow. Um, it's a real quantum shift in thinking where we're doing the analysis in line, you know, as was discussed here, as opposed to after the fact. Great, thank you for that, Paul. Uh, and Mike, you know, data science teams more and more today are using R and Python uh, as languages almost as much, if not more, than the common uh, data mining and predictive model building tools. So can you talk in a little more detail, how would I bring my R model or my Python model into PMML so that it could be uh, run uh, through Zementis in the fashion that you described during the presentation today? Yeah, uh, very good question. Um, we see really a, a multitude of uh, data mining tools and, and R as an open source component has been extremely popular in the community. And open source really allows R to flourish very rapidly. You can you can have new new algorithms, new 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 packages released very quickly. And likewise with Python, Python. and uh, for both of those packages, there's PMML export capabilities. So it is um, as simple as it is in some of the commercial tools like SPSS Modeler, save as in PMML. We have the same capabilities in R. Uh, for example, if you go to the CRAN library, there's two packages: one uh, for PMML exporting models and one that uh, deals specifically with transformations like pre-processing capabilities uh, that you of course also want to encode in, in PMML, so covering the whole spectrum. Um, so PMML really is, is supported across uh, all of these uh, tools that we see out uh, in, in, in usage today and the key part really is that the, the standard decouples yourself, um, it decouples it from you know, specific choices. Um, it allows the asset, the predictive model, to flow between different tools and different platforms and different teams. That's really a, a great way to communicate almost um, the, the needs of the predictive analytics and implementation across the, the boundaries of your organization. Great. Again, thank you for that detailed answer. Um, and Paul, for this one and, and for the, uh, all, all the details, give me a moment. I'm going to go back to one of the slides. Uh, we have a question here where uh, one of the attendees was asking about um, the rest of the data lifecycle on IBM Z and how that sort of supports analytics. So I think uh, just to make this easier for all of us, um, I am going to bring up this slide. Um, and Paul, maybe you can talk a little bit uh, through the uh, through this, uh, not as much on the analyze and transact part, which we spoke to during the presentation, but perhaps uh, the rest of the slide. Um, okay, sure. So this this is actually I could take about an hour and a half to talk through this, but let me try to really net it out. Um, essentially, what we're trying to do with the mainframe is allow you to do any sort of analysis that you want on mainframe data without ever having to move that data off platform. That's the simple answer um, to the overall uh, overall solution. So what we talked about today, when we're looking at injecting analysis directly into the transaction, you know, that's a Zementis solution. Um, and we also have SPSS capabilities for that if you're uh, in a DB2 only environment. Um, but what we also focus on is the ability to integrate insights from, you know, the, the so-called big data stack 
So you can actually connect with ex external Hadoop clusters, for example, and pull insights in from that. We also have the ability to run Hadoop directly on platform, on the Linux side of the platform, um, if you wanted to look at, do some analysis, say, of, uh, of uh, application logs or vSAM data or, or anything of that nature. Um, we have the ability to accelerate reporting. So we didn't talk about, you know, just simple BABI type reporting here, um, but we have a, um, a hybrid solution with a, a um, uh, an appliance called the IBM DB2 Analytics Accelerator that, that greatly accelerates the ability to run reports for BA and BI, again, without having to move data off platform. Um, this, this whole life cycle applies not just to transactional data, but to IT data as well. So if you wanted to use um, onboard analytics to look at your, your mainframe systems and govern them better, so for instance, doing capacity management uh, analytics or doing log analytics or doing you know, preventive type analytics, it, all the same rules apply here. Um, and, and the newest uh, arena that we're getting into is, is Spark. Um, I'm very excited about Spark and, and Zementis is going to be a player in this as well because when Spark comes to the platform by the end of the year, um, you'll be able to uh, do all of these things using one common interface, this, the set of Spark libraries, and you'll be able to do uh, a, lot of a lot of activities on data and memory. So, you know, we're really trying to, you know, reach everything you want to do, you know, real-time at transactional speeds, real-time at analyst speeds, um, IT analytics, exploratory analytics, whatever it is you want to do on mainframe data, um, you should be able to do that directly on the mainframe without that data leaving the platform. And that, that's the overall strategy and goal. And, and Zementis um, plays in, in the real time at transactional speeds for us. They really do a nice job of, of closing that gap. That's great. Appreciate that. And I'll add one thing uh, to that, which is that Zementis Solutions um, already integrated with Spark. And in fact, we've already tested them on Spark on, on the mainframe. So for those of you who are thinking about that on this call, uh, we're, we're happy to talk about uh, that particular uh, architecture and solution. Let me go back to the uh, question slide here. Yeah. yeah, and then Mark, if I may jump in, I mean, Paul, this was a great, great overview, and uh, you, you hit the, the the nail right on its head there with you know, in inline transaction processing, being able to leverage you know the platform that we already have in place there, and bringing basically the execution capabilities to the malls wherever they they need to live, wherever the data is already, wherever the transactions are being processed today. I think that's a fundamental shift that we're seeing in the industry rather than hey, exporting the data and moving it to a, an analytic system, processing over there, uh, looking at the results, uh, transporting the results back into the source system that you can actually use them for a business decision. All of that, I think, is, is really a, a how we've done it in the past. And today, we, we need to be faster in, in, in a mobile world, in a web, in an online world where everybody expect you know real-time decisions you know, you can ask your phone for directions and you expect an immediate answer the same is true for everything that we do online so the systems need to be able to infuse those you know, intelligent decisions online no matter what the back-end system is and I think that's really our our core common method here that you know, transcends you know, individual systems and individual choices of solutions but really you know, for the business side to, to, to keep in mind that that's where you need to go. If you do that with IBM and Dementis or anywhere else, I think this is the core focus for your business strategy. Great. And I think we'll do one more question, and then, then we'll probably be I'd have just enough time to wrap up. And I think perfect segue from that, Mike, is probably everyone on this call sees a, a great amount of growth in the next several years in predictive analytics and the number of models. So what frameworks does Zementis provide for managing models for a client that's going from dozens to hundreds to maybe thousands of models? Um, uh, you know, what, what, what should a client expect there? Mm -hmm. I think, um, I mean, um, again, coming back to, to the quick demo I did where you saw, you know, eight, ten models. Um, the same holds true for tens, twenties, hundreds, or thousands of models. Um, it's a management capability that gives you one common API, one common process to deploy and to execute. 
it doesn't matter, you know, how many models or what, how, how complex or how simple each model is. And that's really the, the abstraction that we, we emphasize. The, the open standard allows us to consume it from virtually any platform and then to deploy it to that abstraction layer uh, kind of alleviates that pain of you know, custom coding where you know, once you have one model, you know, if you go to two or three, it becomes extremely complex and painful and that's where we see deployment cycles take six months, nine months, 12 months or longer uh, versus what we can offer here, which is you know, instantaneous. Um, you have governance on top of that. You have a you know, well-defined process, a well-defined um, commonality between different organizations that, that can hand over uh, simple requirement specifications, so to speak, from the data science to the IT team and deliver it to the business. Great. Uh, well, Paul, Mike, uh, I, I know we all very much appreciate the time you took today to provide this briefing and this webinar. Uh, thank you so much, and for all the answers to these questions. I'd like to thank all of our attendees for taking the time out of their schedules to attend today. If you would like to continue this conversation, learn more about Zementis, you can reach me, mark.radkin at zementis.com or via LinkedIn. Um, please keep an eye out for an email you will see from us. Again, that will have a link to the joint solution brief that we did with IBM. Uh, have a wonderful week. I look forward to the time when our paths cross again, and this is going to conclude our webinar for today. Have a wonderful day.